Hey, what's up, YouTube? It's Richie from Boston. Today's the 21st of March, 2017. And for all the newer subscribers and to answer all the questions, comments, and emails I've received on CERN, for those that haven't watched the past videos and dozen live streams I've done with Anthony Patch on this matter, I'm going to attempt to break down what CERN is, who created CERN, and what its actual mission is according to CERN. Now, bear in mind, a lot of these are going to be allegations. A lot of these are going to be from the white papers provided by CERN. And a lot of this is just going to be my personal theory itself. So hang on. This is going to take a while. CERN is located on the Franco-Swiss border in Geneva, Switzerland. CERN is buried below the Earth's surface 300 to 500 feet down. CERN is a series of rings that accelerate using electromagnets that are kept colder than outer space is alleged to be. They accelerate particles, electrons, photons, and sometimes particles of lead in opposite directions at each other at 99.9% .9 the speed of light, causing tremendous explosions that they claim are a million times hotter than the center of the sun. And their stated mission is to recreate the moments after the theoretical Big Bang. Now, bear in mind, all the information that we have to go on is exclusively from CERN. The white papers that they've released and information we've gleaned from articles, discussions and presentations put out by CERN workers and people that study CERN for a life's work. Now, some things we can tell you without a doubt. CERN is the largest, the most expensive, and the most complicated machine ever devised by humanity, at least this time around. And their stated goal is, like I said, to recreate the moments after the Big Bang, and scientists openly declare that they want to open other dimensions. They want to either open other dimensions to let something out, or to let something in. This has been stated by the people that run CERN on numerous occasions. CERN was officially flipped on, turned on for the first time September 10th in 2008. Now, conspiracy theorists get a bad name for going after CERN, but CERN itself basically is the one creating all of these theories on their own. Even the names of everything that CERN uses is suspect, starting with the name itself, CERN. Its name itself is derived by an acronym, the European Organization for Nuclear Research, or CERN. Now, in mythology, there is a, the, the word CERN carries a lot of weight because it crosses over to Cernunos, the god of the underworld. Frequently depicted, as you see here, with large horns like a reindeer, always holding a ring in one hand and a serpent in the other. Commonly found in Celtic mythology as well as pagan mythology, he's connected with male animals, particularly the stag in rut. And this has led him to be associated with fertility and vegetation. He is also betrayed as the god of the underworld. This is one of the reasons. The name itself CERN puts people thinking towards conspiratorial theories. And a simple search of the names of the detectors will lead you down a mythological path as well. And it's not too hard to do. First, you have the detector Alpha. And this is one of the terms used to describe God in the Quran as well as in the Bible. Then you have Aegis, depicted here as with serpents as hair with angels in the background. Aegis, according to Greek mythology, was a shield made by Athena. It was used by Perseus to peer at Medusa without being turned to stone. And then you have the Atlas detector. Atlas is depicted right here, holding up the entire earth on his shoulders while maidens lay around. He was an ancient god, was considered a titan. He was made to hold up the heavens and keep the heavens separate from earth. Now think about that in CERN's basic mission statement itself, to keep heaven separated from earth. 
And one of the main conspiracy theorists theories is that CERN is indeed trying to tear the veil. And they allude to that quite often, but I'll get to that later. Athena. Athena was considered to be the embodiment of wisdom and the goddess of reason and intellectual activity. Azakusa. Azakusa is a district in Tokyo renowned for its Buddhist temple dedicated to the deity Bodhisattva, a being with enlightenment. Alice, the Alice detector. Now that's an easy one. Alice in Wonderland tells the story of a girl, Alice, who tumbles down the rabbit hole into another dimension or reality. And then, of course, you have the totem. A totem could be considered a spiritual guide, as well as Delphi. Delphi was a sanctuary of Apollo and an ancient city in Greece. And then, of course, don't forget Cerberus. Cerberus is the name given to a triple ionization chamber used by CERN, and it's also the three-headed dog that guards the gates of hell. And of course, no scientific project would be complete without an, the word Hades involved. And Hades is shown right here with his hand on top of Cerberus. High acceptance D-electron spectrometer is a detector aimed at studying dielectron production. Opal. On a website entitled witchesofthecraft.com, the author, Lady of the Abyss, has this to say about CERN and Opal. Opal is also said to be very spiritual stone. It can, want, it can help one be invisible in situations where they don't care to be noticed. How much of the activities at CERN would they rather went unnoticed? And then, of course, you have the compass, which is an obligatory nod towards the Freemasonic people that hold all this information for years until CERN technology was able to be put into action. The compass is an ancient symbol of the secret society known as Freemasonry that is used with a carpenter's square as a symbol of their organization. The compass taken by itself is a symbol of the heavens or even, dare I say, the spirit realm that is CERN is trying to open a portal into. And then Satan himself. The Solar Axion Telescopic Antenna is perhaps the most obvious example of what I'm referring to at CERN. It was a proposal that CERN acquire this telescope for its research. I've been able, unable to confirm whether or not they got this telescope, but just the fact that they wanted to get a device called Satan should speak volumes. And then CERN itself. I've already shown you that this horned underground god, the deity of the dead, this brings us to the name CERN. CERN is actually short for Sununos, who was the Celtic horned god of the underworld. You have these horns often represented in Illuminati content. If that's not enough to convince you, I have no idea what possibly could. Now that all aside, all the information gathered by CERN's never-ending super secret experiments are all gathered together by the World Wide Web. And as Anthony Patch has alluded to, we use 4G. CERN is probably up and above us on the grid at 5G. CERN invented the Internet for a reason. To get everybody to enter their every thought, feeling, emotion, how they thought of a situation, if they liked or disliked it, and how they would enter all their personal information, including blood types, financial, everything into a computer database that not only feeds the D-Wave computer system that works at CERN, but CERN itself. CERN came into being after World War II when Fat Man and Little Boy were dropped, and it was a devastating event. Scientists decided they could study the effects and the devastating effects of nuclear bombs inside a laboratory. Thus, CERN came into being. This was back in the early 1950s. Combining bankers scientists, political leaders, and the military together, these people have become obsessed with harnessing the power that they saw unleashed through nuclear weapons. And that's why CERN is so well funded. It is the world's most expensive machine ever devised by mankind, at least post-Diluvian man. CERN is hands down the biggest consortium of scientists on the planet Earth right now. 
21 countries, and it's an ever-growing list, and the, and the colliders are all around the world, but CERN is the largest and biggest. China is claiming they're going to big a, build a larger one, but after the introduction of the AWAKE project, the Wakefield Linear Collider, they may not have to. And once again, the, the name AWAKE, I understand that it's a shortened word, an acronym for Wakefield Linear Collider. This is coupled with CERN. This is not a standalone device. This is hooked up to one of the largest tubes at CERN. And it works as a, as one person told me, this will multiply 99.9% .9 is what they can reach using CERN. With this tied to the end of it, with this bolted up to CERN, the awake field processor, the awake field collider, can multiply that power by a thousand times. So what CERN was doing was basically shooting spitballs against the veil between humanity and spirituality. Awake will give it a more laser-like effect, and then D-Wave will come in finally and will control the Stargate once they tear the veil. Using ancient techniques as well as geometry, sacred wisdom, and harmonics, CERN will have everything in line that they need to once again tear the veil, but this time from the bottom up. Now, if you follow my channel for any length of time, you've heard the dozen live streams or so that I've done with Anthony Patch on this exact topic. What CERN is trying to do is to go into the very fabric of the universe, the quark gluons that hold everything together and disassemble them. They've already basically figured out what they're made of, and now they're trying to basically unglue the entire thing. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, I've gone to CERN's website. I've seen it all. It all seems pretty innocuous. It's just a giant science project. The only thing is the theories that spring up about CERN, I mean, let alone all the names of everything that they have all go back to mythical things, but that's just what scientists do. The same thing with NASA, all their rockets, everything had a mythological twist to it. Well, CERN doesn't only, CERN doesn't deny the, the theories that are placed against it. CERN feeds them with such things like this. Now, dozens of channels have done amazing decoding of this entire dance opera that was performed at CERN with CERN, CERN's stamp of approval. This clearly shows a scientist at CERN looking at sacred geometry, and then the entire thing continues to go on using sacred dances that we've seen, as well as the circle in the sand. All of it plays to the esoteric, to the occult. And the main character playing the scientist dancing right there in the white shirt, his name was Lucas, which is an easy, easy derivation of the word Lucifer or the light bearer, if you look into it. CERN doesn't hide this stuff. They actually encourage it. And it continues to go on right up to CERN's logo, which is a very easily discernible six 
six, six. Not even very well hidden, in my opinion. To the statue of Shiva doing the Nataraja out front, the dance of destruction directly in front of CERN's facility. This was a gift from India given to CERN, and they had a large celebration when it finally arrived. Why in the world would a scientific facility even be giving a nod to anything religious? Because religion and science go together like water and oil. And yet there it stands, along with so many other things, like the constant videos put out by CERN with their little subliminal, subliminal messaging, my mistake, hidden inside all of them. In this one right here, they're dancing, we're happy at CERN. And there it's loaded with symbolism, as above, so below, as well as giving a nod to the much-hyped Mandela effect, as seen right here. CERN enjoys messing with us. Take note of the man's shirt. You have a 666 clearly printed right on it, as well as Bond in Mandela, which gives you the Mandela effect. CERN is riddled with this throughout their history. Not to mention the mock human sacrifice that went on at CERN that I still to this day have a age restriction on the video that I put up when this actually occurred. Now, when I put this video up about this sacrifice, my, my, my main objective wasn't that it was a real human sacrifice going on. My problem with this entire thing was that this was done on CERN's premises. This is the statue Shiva at CERN. These are the CERN buildings. And CERN originally tried to deny it, and then they had to come out in the newspaper, which they did, and said it did indeed happen at 2 o'clock in the morning by a bunch of scientists that work at CERN carrying access cards that allowed them in and out of the property. That was my main problem, and CERN finally had to acquiesce and answer for it, in which they did. And again... While looking at CERN, it's easy for people to simply say, this is a large scientific project. But think about what I said at the beginning. This is the largest, most expensive, most complicated machine ever devised by men. Now, every other thing in that category devised by men has always and only been used for war. And this one is no different. CERN's main goal is to destabilize and tear the veil between humanity and spirituality, much like all the ancient texts allude to. And they're very close. They had to install the Awake Project last year, and it is now up and running. CERN's goal, no matter what the scientists may think, we know how the scientists at the Manhattan Project were all compartmentalized and didn't know what the other guy was doing. I can't help but think that the scientists at CERN must think they're doing the right thing and don't understand that they're bringing on the apocalypse. Many people, many rumors and many newspapers have written about the, the worry about CERN creating a black hole and causing the earth to implode on itself. While forgetting that black holes are still to this very day, nothing more than theory, they are theoretical. But the main danger that you do need to worry about, something that isn't pure conjecture or theory, is dark matter. And CERN has indeed not only produced dark matter, but they've learned how to contain it. My name is Jeffrey Hanks. I'm from the University of Aarhus in Denmark. I'm the spokesperson for the Alpha experiments at the Antiproton Decelerator here at CERN. A good way to think of antimatter is it's sort of a mirror image of normal matter. For some reason, the universe is made of matter. We don't know why that is, because you could, in principle, make a universe out of antimatter. Antimatter is very is identical to matter, but has opposite properties. For example, the fundamental particles that make up atoms, protons and neutrons and electrons, they have antimatter equivalents. What alpha does is to work with the simplest anti-atom, anti-hydrogen. Okay, hydrogen is number one on the periodic table. Anti-hydrogen is the antimatter equivalent of that. We've been making that anti-atom here at CERN in the anti-proton decelerator since 2002, producing it by mixing anti-protons 
and positrons to make a, a neutral antiatom. What's new about alpha is that now we've managed to hold on to those antiatoms. Normally, when we made them in our previous experiment called Athena, the antimatter would escape and annihilate. Matter and antimatter, when they meet, they make energy, they annihilate. What this experiment does now, and the breakthrough here, is to hold on to the antimatter. What CERN uses the same technology that we saw in Angels and Demons, the movie with Tom Hanks, where they store it in a magnetic chamber. It is one of the most dangerous, one of, one of the most explosive compounds ever found by man. There's a reason he didn't, under, he didn't explain exactly what it is. In our reality, matter, a piece of wood is matter. Antimatter is a piece of wood in another dimension that's already on fire. They don't mention that part or they don't seem willing to explain that all the way through. But that's exactly what it is. The scientists at CERN, just like at any other facility that does anything breakthrough, are eventually taken over by the people that give the money. And they have to bow down to the people that hand them the money to allow them to do these projects in the first place. And these projects are always steered towards a military objective. Every time, no exceptions. I'm not trying to imply that the scientists at CERN or some mad scientist holed up in an underground facility laughing and planning the demise of humanity. But let's be honest here. Every time something is found that can destroy better than the thing they had before, this entire project came right after they dropped Fat Man and Little Boy. So what do you think they're going to use it for? And think about the shadow governments behind everyone. They're there in every country, in every corner, all over the earth, and they always have been. And CERN is no different, except this time this will be their last hurrah. This is exactly what we were warned about in ancient texts, no matter what the religion of the people listening right now. This is the proverbial opening of the pit. CERN's actual location is built upon the fabled temple of Abaddon or Apollyon the Destroyer. That's not an accident. Every place in this country, every place in this world where there is a powerful place where an ancient temple once stood, there's an even more important building or a military base in its place right now. These same people behind the scenes have wisdom. They have access to ancient knowledge, again, buried in the vaults of the Vatican and throughout the world. And they very well know there was no Big Bang. They know who the God of this earth is and who the God of the universe is. And this machine isn't looking for the theoretical moments after a theoretical Big Bang. They know what this is for, and that's what should concern everyone. And their intent is to use the D-Wave quantum computer in tandem with CERN. CERN, with its AWAKE project up and running, will attempt to tear the veil while the D-Wave quantum computer, working in a daisy chain fa fashion with all the quantum computers around the Earth, will maintain the stargate or portal that they rip through the fabric of the universe. If and when CERN and the AWAKE project finally manage to undo the quark gluons holding our reality together, the D-Wave quantum computer will be enacted to stabilize it enough for humans to go through or entities to come through to our side, which is more likely the way it's going to work out. And if that's not enough to convince you, think about this. The same year that CERN was conceived, is the same year that the Bilderberg Group was formed. That's no coincidence, in my honest opinion. He knew the world would not be the same. Few people laughed. Few people cried. Most people were silent. I remembered the line from the Hindu scripture, the Bhagavad Gita. 
Vishnu is trying to persuade the prince that he should do his duty and to impress him takes on his multi-armed form and says now I am become death the destroyer of worlds I suppose we all thought that now when you mention the name Werner Karl Heisenberg this is what comes to mind but in reality he was the esteemed physicist that even after the European Organization for Nuclear Research broke up. He was the one that convinced them to keep the name CERN. He was a German theoretical physicist from the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute of Physics, and no doubt an occultist. That's just a guess. And here's a quote by Thomas Horn, a researcher on the path of the immortals. Werner Heisenberg Heisenberg understood quite well what quantum, quantum physics implied for humanity. Inherent within this theoretical realm populated by obtuse equations and pipe-smoking scientists lies in what I call the Babylon potential. So I'm not the only one that's on this exact path. This is the secret knowledge, the scientific imperative informed and driven by spiritual advisors that the Bible cites as the key to opening a gateway for the gods. It is the Entamanaki, Baba Alu, the opening of the Abzu, the doorway to hell. And on that same vein, when speaking with Anthony Patch, the author of Revised Reality, as well as several other books, we came to the conclusion that the chemtrails that everyone's seeing in the skies is part of the terraforming of the planet. Now think about this. I know that sounds insane, but why in the world would the people that run everything want to kill everyone off, even though they aren't? The population's exploding more than it ever has. Why would they want to genetically modify the food to the point where there's no return? You can't get it back to nature anymore. Why would they want to dump nuclear power plants into the oceans, into the streams? Because our entire planet, especially our country, is riddled with it right now. And why would you want to fill the atmosphere constantly with barium, strontium, aluminum, and whatever else it is they're spraying. We've quite often caught NASA talking about putting lithium into the sky, causing the clouds to become red, and we've seen that too many times right now. And I know that may seem dramatic, but honestly, open your eyes and look around. They're spraying us every single solitary day. Are they doing this under instruction from people they talk to via the D-Wave quantum computer? or the technological Ouija board, as I call it? Who is giving them this plan? Why would you want to destroy the air that you and your heirs or your children have to breathe? Because it's, it's almost to the point where it's unrepairable the way it stands now. We have never-ending stories of power plants leaking tritium and other radioactive elements into the waterways all around the country and certainly all around the world. But on that, I digress. I know all of this is very difficult to swallow, but think about this. CERN is based, their foundation is upon the scientific method, and the godfather of all the scientific method is Sir Francis Bacon, who was an enormous occultist, as are most of them. In order to get the secrets of the universe, they would often, often hold rituals and speak to other, other beings from other dimensions. If you look into history, you can find it's absolutely riddled with occult scientific stories, myths, and tales. So it's not very hard to tie all this together. CERN is indeed trying to tear the veil. The veil was torn once from the bottom down when Jesus gave up the ghost and left this mortal coil. CERN is trying to tear the veil from the bottom up. And we as the awake humans on this planet can only watch and wait and see if this is something that God will indeed allow to continue. I'm Richie from Boston. There'll be links in the description. Please like, share, subscribe.